Billionaire pedophile Jeffrey Epstein is back in the news again uh, after years of avoiding any real punishment for literally running a worldwide underage sex trafficking ring uh, because he's finally been arrested and this time he might actually go to prison for a period of time proportionate to his crimes. Maybe. I mean, that should be forever. But honestly, I keep my hopes low because after the last time when now Labor Secretary Alex Acosta prosecuted Epstein, he let him off with a slap on the wrist uh, while hiding the sweetheart deal he cut from the girls that Epstein raped. Since Epstein was released from his first sentence, which was about a year of having to spend 12 hours a day in a comfy prison cell, uh, he apparently went on to victimize more children, as evidenced by a trove of pornography unearthed by investigators who raided his home this week. It's all truly sickening, and everyone involved in this monster walking free should be headed to prison with him in a perfect world. Surly Amy wrote about this. Uh, she gave an overview of it on Skeptic. And in that piece, she points out that many conservatives are warning liberals not to get too excited because uh, this investigation may end up snagging some of our heroes. What a load of absolute bullshit. No pedophile has ever or will ever be my hero. Uh, and as Amy points out, We've already had that experience of watching someone that we previously admired turn out to be an absolute piece of shit. And it already even happened in relation to Epstein. I'm speaking, of course, about Lawrence Krauss. Uh, eight years ago, when the Epstein sentencing was heavily in the news, a skeptic reader sent us an alarming quote from Lawrence Krauss, um, a man who... Previously, we all admired he had appeared on my old podcast, um, and, you know, we wouldn't expect this of him. And yet, Krauss was quoted defending Epstein, who had just been convicted of, again, soliciting sex from an underage girl uh, by saying that he had uh, never seen Epstein rape a minor. And Krauss is a scientist, so he knows what's right. The two of them were friends, and Epstein gave a lot of money to Krauss for various projects. We thought there's no way, despite their supposed friendship and how much money Epstein has given Krauss, there's no way he would have actually said something so boneheaded. So rather than just run the story, I contacted Lawrence Krauss and asked for context. And he gave me that context text, which was essentially, yep, bitches be lying. <laughs> In a barely literate screed that he insisted I publish in full, he claimed that Epstein was the actual victim here and that the teenage girls he raped actually took advantage of him and that they then made uh, false accusations to get his money. When I published all of his statements, Krauss went on to quadruple down and uh, jumped into the comments on the post, pointing out that even if Epstein did rape those kids, Krauss knows for a fact he came out of prison uh, a more thoughtful and responsible man who was intent on doing good. And that, I swear to God, he said this, if the famous physicist Richard Feynman were still alive today, he would also agree with Lawrence Krauss. Fucking yikes. <laughs> a few years later, as even more evidence of Epstein's heinous crimes came to light, Krauss continued to defend him. Uh, he wasn't the only scientist to do so, which I guess isn't surprising, considering that Epstein gave millions of dollars to many scientists, and a few, mostly male scientists, got those extra perks of getting to fly around in his jet, which the media dubbed the Lolita Express. Uh, or hang out at parties on his private island. One prominent scientist, Robert Trivers, who's a piece of shit evolutionary psychologist, uh, who Epstein once gave uh, $40,000, he offered up in defense of Epstein, and I quote, by the time girls are 14 or 15, they're like grown women were 60 years ago. So I don't see these acts as so heinous. Wow. I'm genuinely curious what other scientists were so close to Epstein that they knew about his behavior and either ignored it or condone it or even participated in it. Um, 
in 2006, around the time that the first of Epstein's many accusers was going public, 21 physicists were flown to Epstein's private island to hang out. Those included Lawrence Krauss, of course, but also Stephen Hawking, Lisa Randall, Jim Peebles, uh, Alan Guth at MIT, Kip Thorne from Caltech, and three Nobel laureates, uh, Jared Oosthoofd, uh, David Gross, and Frank Wilczek. After my initial reporting on Epstein and Krauss, I set up a Google alert on Epstein in order to follow his ongoing legal issues. And what I found was at first really depressing because once the initial story died down, most of the pings I got were press releases touting Epstein's funding of scientists like anti-poaching measures and 3D breast cancer scans. The gross thing is that it worked. I saw things like this article from Forbes uh, where Drew Hendricks writes an entire article about science funder Jeffrey Epstein without once mentioning that this man was convicted of raping an underage girl a few years prior. That article is about Epstein funding an organization called Open Cog, founded by Ben Gertzel in 2013, five years after Epstein's conviction. There's absolutely no way that the people of Open Cog didn't know that they were being funded by an actual pedophile who arranged an international sex trafficking ring, but they went ahead with it anyway. Not everyone is happy to continue taking a pedophile's money, so uh, Epstein eventually set up a secret charity to funnel money to various scientists and charity organizations, as revealed recently by the Daily Beast. And clearly some of that is just for money laundering, since many of the organizations contacted by the Daily Beast had absolutely no record of getting those donations in the first place, let alone from a secret organization run by Jeffrey Epstein. Um, but that article does show that some people did take the money and they still knew that it came from Epstein. For instance, science writer Robert Lawrence Kuhn, who knowingly took $150,000 from Jeffrey Epstein in 2017. It's insane to me to know that we have a man who was convicted of raping a minor and who has likely done much, much worse. And all of the scientists he gave money to are either completely silent about it or vociferously defending him. I've yet to find a single comment from any of the scientists he's wined and dined saying so much as, hey, it's wrong to set up an international child sex trafficking ring. And that's completely fucked up. In 2018, Krauss's own sexually abusive past fully came to light in a BuzzFeed investigation that found several women who said he had sexually harassed them in the past, including a woman who complained that Krauss propositioned her for a threesome while he was speaking aboard a Center for Inquiry cruise ship. CFI buried the complaint and invited Krauss back on the cruise at a later year. This is no shock. Uh, abusers protect abusers. That's why Krauss hasn't simply been silent about Jeffrey Epstein. It's why he's been one of the ones vociferously defending him. I mean, why would Krauss abandon someone over some light child rape when he himself has regularly pushed straight on past women's established boundaries? First, they came for the child sex rapist, and then they came for the regular sexual harasser. I took a look and apparently Krauss is still popular, showing that it doesn't actually matter if you're an abuser so long as you're famous. Uh, he has a podcast called Origins that appears to be quite popular in which he has fellow shitheads like P Pendulette and Ricky Gervais on uh, to talk shop. But he even got people like Noam Chomsky and author Jennifer Finney Boylan, who I guess either don't know or don't care about Krauss's sexual harassment or his ardent support of a convicted and unrepentant pedophile. If anybody knows those two, feel free to give them a shout on Twitter or something and let them know just in case. Uh, and oh, look, it looks like Krauss is even getting to go on another cruise with his best friend, Richard Dawkins. Let's see, they're going to Cambodia. Nice. Maybe if Epstein can get away from all this again, he can join them. I'm sure he'd love Cambodia, which is a tier two uh, country for human trafficking and one of the top countries in the world for child sex slavery. But I'm sure Krauss thinks all those girls are just lying too. So yeah, anyway, you want my heroes? 
come and get them. I don't care what they've done for science or liberalism. Uh, if they're too cowardly to speak out against a convicted pedophile, if they defend him, or if even worse, they joined in on his actions, please feel free to fire them straight into the sun.